Indiana University East Chemistry C106 Acid Base Titration Curves. So, in an acid base titration, which you've done last year in C125, you basically use a burette to deliver measured amounts of a titrant, usually a base, but sometimes we use an acid, and we add it to what we call an analyte typically an acid, but it could be a base. And in experiment 16b, you're going to do one of these. Back then, we were using it mostly to figure out the concentration of the analyte or the titrant. In chemistry C106 and C126, the goal is to use this to figure out more information about the nature of the acids and bases involved. So let's think about the diff different combinations we have. Firstly, we have strong acids and strong bases. So for example, we have HCl and NaOH, and we neutralize to form H2O and NaCl. Initially, we have some amount, so this is 0 0.10 molar HCl. Now, as you add in NaOH, what goes on is that the H plus concentration from the H strong acid decreases. But it decreases linearly, so it actually the pH increases very, very slowly. So until you get close to the equivalence point. So it's kind of a reverse log curve as you can see here. So you see a very sharp transition as you get close to, to the equivalence point. And here the equivalence point is defined as the point where all of the acid is neutralized. As all the acid is neutralized, we have and just. So therefore, at this point, everything's neutral. You have water and sodium chloride salt, which is neutral, and so the pH is 7. The next possibility is if I start with a weak acid as the analyte and I titrate it with a strong base. Now this gets a little more complicated. Here, for example, if I have HA plus NaOH going to form H2O and Na A. Okay. <clears throat> so at the equivalence point, again, it means that all HA is neutralized. If all the HA here is neutralized, what do we form? We form A minus, or NaA, which is, which is the conjugate base. So to figure out the pH here, what we have to do is, at the equivalence point, what you can do is you will have your pH is determined by looking at the conjugate base. What you have to do first is dilution calculation. You need to do a dilution calculation to figure out the actual concentration of the conjugate base here and then if you know the KB of the conjugate base, and the concentration, you can figure out the pH at this point. After that, you have excess hydroxide, and so you use your excess hydroxide hydroxide concentration to give you your pH using 
a strong base calculation. Now, <clears throat> so here you have a relatively sharp transition. Here, on the other hand, we start with a weak acid. And then what happens when I neutralize some weak acid? Now, in the middle here, okay, you have similar quantities of HA and A minus. So we've got similar amounts of a weak acid and its conjugate base. What do we have here? We have a buffer solution. Okay. We have a buffer solution. And so at this point, there is not a very sharp change in pH here. So you, you see a somewhat of an increase and then you see a very gradual increase. until you reach the sharp end. So it's not as sharp. The overall curve is not as sharp here. It's kind of a gradual increase. That's how you tell you have a weak acid. Okay, and so you, you can tell where the equivalence point is. And when the volume of the hydroxide is equal to half of that at the equivalence point. So here the equivalence point is at 12, 25, so I'm looking for 12.5. We call it the half equivalence point. At the half equivalence point, what happens? Well, HA plus OH minus goes to form A minus and H2O. Okay? And half the equivalence point, half of this is converted so we have equal numbers of moles of HA and A minus so the concentration of HA is equal to the concentration of A minus and so therefore using the henderson hasselbach equation pH is equal to pKA plus log to the base 10 of a of base over acid but top and bottom are equal to each other so that's equal to 1 and so log of 1 is 0 so that's equal to pKa so at the half equivalence point pH is equal to pKa there's one last comment I forgot to make earlier so in a weak acid strong base titration, you will also see that at the equivalence point, because there's a conjugate base here, so the pH is greater than 7. Okay, with weak base strong acid titration, here, you see here we have appreciable amounts of the weak base and its conjugate acid. And so this is a buffering region. Again, and at the equivalence point now, you have the conjugate acid present. So therefore, this pH is less than 7. It's acidic. And again, you see a gradual decrease here before you see a big drop, and then it goes like this. That's how you tell if it is a weak base strong acid titration. Finally, for polyprotic acid, you can see that there are, and here, Okay, I have say H H two oxalic acid, okay? H two C two O four. Now here I have two protons. And remember you have two protons to get rid of. So here you see that the first one is weak and the second one is also weak. So you see here you have a gradual increase and here you have a gradual increase but here note that you lose one proton at a time and hence you have two equivalence points so if it's triprotic you see three equivalence points